Dr. Madhu Narayan. Yeah. So I'm Dr. Madhu Narayan, and I'm going to present a case of mucosal of the lower lip, a usual case with an unusual histopathology, a case report. The key words of my presentation would be mucosal, lower lip, and myxoglobulosis. This is the abstract of my presentation. To introduce the lesion, the oral mucosal is an extravasation phenomenon seen in lower lips mostly. And myxoglobulosis is a rare histologic phenomenon that is characterized by transformation of mucin into eosinophilic globules seen mostly in the appendix. The present case describes a combination of these, which is the occurrence of myxoglobulosis in the mucosal of the lower lip. Special staining with pass was done to elicit the mucinosis. So to enter into the case, an 18-year-old male um, reported to the institution the chief complaint of swelling in the lower lip on the right side for the past two weeks. <clears throat> the patient was apparently normal before two weeks, after which, <clears throat> sorry, after which he developed swelling in the right lower lip, which was painless and was of gradual onset. There was no relevant past medical history, but the patient had been wearing a removable partial denture since two years. <clears throat> on inspection, the lesion was single, well-defined, sessile, was present on the right lower lip, was of the size one into one centimeter, was present three centimeter behind the vermilion border of the lip, elevated had a smooth surface, had a white keratotic layer in the center. On palpation, it was soft, non-tender, compressible, and not associated with any discharge. The tentative diagnosis given by the clinicians was that of mucosine. For the purpose of diagnostic assessment, an excisional biopsy was performed, and the specimens were sent to our department for histopathological analysis. Three soft tissue specimens were sent in 10% formalin, which were irregular in shape, firm in consistency, pale white in color superiorly and grayish white inferiorly, one, were, were about 1.2 into 0 0.7, 0 0.6 into 0 0.4, and 0 0.6 into 0 0.2 centimeter in sizes, respectively. These are the macroscopic pictures. <laughs> so the microscopic uh, examination revealed the paracaritinized stratified squamous epithelium, and the connective tissue revealed endothelial cell proliferation, numerous in nature, dilated ducts, mucin-filled cavity without the lining epithelium, Asini with septic, numerous blood vessels and the plasma cells, al along with extra vasitic RBCs. And one more unique feature was noted. The very reason I'm discussing the case here for was that of mixoglobulosis. Organized collection of mucins um, uh, showing the laminated concentric pattern was evident in my lesion. A past stain was done to elicit this mucinasis, and it was very much positive. Therapeutic intervention has already been done in the form of excision biopsy. On follow-up of the patient, the excised area had healed uneventfully. So to discuss this case, what is mucosal? Mucosal is nothing but an extra recession phenomenon usually seen in the salivary uh, tissues. And the etiology can either be a ductal rupture or a ductal dilatation because of some obstruction. Clinical features, usually it's very common in the first three decades of life. There is no gender predilection and very, very common in the lower lip. And presence is a superficial or deep swelling with a bluish hue. Histopathologically, it reveals itself as a circumscribed cavity with, uh, filled with the mucoid material in the connective tissue. The differential diagnosis in, in uh, per pertinent to the oral cavity would be canalicular adenoma, but the latter is very common in the upper lip. Treatment would be excision, and the prognosis recurrence has been noted. So coming to the main part of my discussion, what is mixoglobulosis? Mixoglobulosis is defined as an organized collection of mucin with an eosinophilic uh, laminated amorphous code. The e multiple etiologic hypotheses have been suggested for this one. The most important ones being a bacterial or an epithelial debris acting as a nidus for mucin deposition or an exuberant reparative process by the granulation tissue for whatever mucin has been extruded into the connective tissue or a localized change in the microenvironment. This type of mixoglobulosis is very common in the appendix because of the obstruction of the uh, uh, proximal appendiceal duct. Other sites, it has been reported in lower lip and in the laryngeal mucosa. And histopathologically, again, uh, uh, it's the same as the definition, organized collection of lumen showing concentric pattern. In lower lip mixoglobulus is also present with the same histopathology, but the only difference is the globules are smaller in size. There is no calcific deposits and no uh, cholesterol clefts being present. Special stains, positive for all the mucin stains like PAS, Alcian, Blue, and Musicamin. IHC, it's Vimentin positive. Differential diagnosis, clinical and radiographic differential diagnosis would be polypoid adenoma, lymphoma, lipoma, and histopathological differential diagnosis would be a collagen spherulosis, which is more of a morphological DD, histopathological DD. It has been known to be associated with neoplasm cysts at appendix cyst adenoma. Correlation with the present cases, it is uh, expected that lesions showing mixoglobulosis would have a better prognosis because of, because of the good host response and the globular collection of mucin. 
So these are some of the pictures of microglobulosis, uh, myxoglobulosis appendix that I have shown uh, with the reference cited below, and of the lower lip again with the reference cited below. These are my references. I would like to thank my HOD, Dr. K. Rajkumar, my professor, Dr. Ramesh Kumar, and the organizers of the current webinar, in particular, Dr. Mandana, Dr. Maniam, and Dr. Priya for their fantastic support. As a take home message, I would like to say that what the brain doesn't know, the eyes will not see. As oral pathologists, we always dream for a unique, typical, bookish, rare case to fall on our lap so that it marks our life. But instead, it is better to develop the academic acumen to recognize the unique features, keep our minds and ears open, because a simple case can have a unique histopathology. I would like to conclude that negligence is not just doing something wrong, but also failing to identify what is right. With this parting shot, I take leave. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Madhu. It was really a very interesting case.